on today's episode, I am first in line at the Walmart. The line is only like three trucks behind me, and uh, they won't take me. Appointment on the app and uh, Raycon says five o'clock. They say my appointment six o'clock. <laughs> I'm here at four thirty, so I have to go out and go back around. Stick around, find out. Drive shaft, she got the carrier bin. Ooh, all dirty. Drive shaft complete. Back to tarpon, or actually strapped. And uh, that's what actually moves up and down and pushes on the spring. Um, those head bolts, probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to get out. And a JB hook. Hey. So, oh, that was nice of you. 19765. So that is a wrap. What do you think? You good? Every state is probably going to be different. Bypass on the way station coming into Georgia. Georgia Welcome Center. That is where that uh, TCP is pretty horrific accident happened a little bit ago. And, and I can't imagine that stuff we deal with out here in truck drivers, you never know. I'm sure nobody thought going to sleep that night that that, and I, what I've heard is the gentleman who uh, was going too fast actually had a, a heart complication. So that can happen anywhere to anybody at any time. One of these drivers out here got a SUV Tahoe going in there, just kind of patrolling. We're actually not to explore. Patrolling the local center. We're cruising to Georgia. Make good time, get down here, get, get uh, like four or five hours of sleep and load or deliver in the morning, reset our clock, and head back up. That sure wasn't too long and we are back in Florida. What a great week.
why they're letting me go. It's because my truck's so shiny on that side. On that side. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's all dirty from driving in the rain, but here we go. A little bit left and we'll be there. Look at that nice Peter built that blue. It's pretty coming. I want those lights on the end of my bumper. And I think I want a different bumper. I want the same little circle lights, but I want um, to be boxed on the edge where it has that little cutout the same size, as the, the same concave as your tire, or contour, sorry. I want that one, now it's kind of boxed on the uh, outer parts. Looks cool, because mine's bent a little bit from someone hitting it in a, in a truck stop somewhere. It kind of bothers me a little bit. It's not really noticeable, but you can kind of see on the driver's side, it's bent a little bit. I can probably sell this one for pretty good money. I don't know. I don't know. I just spent on that. That would be uh, the bumper I want. And I also want to get a whole new grill for this thing. Now that I'm getting all in the polish mood, I would like a brand new one. I might be able to polish this one up pretty good, but just have like a brand new shiny outer part of that grill, you know, like the outer aluminum piece. That would be nice. So, Christmas, T-Dubs, Red Wheels, and all that stuff. Yeah, just throw it all in one package. I promise it won't cost much. Let's go. Not sure what we got going on. Like it's just uh, lots of cement trucks. So I don't know. There's something going on. Wreck or something. 71 degrees. Gorgeous. Almost to that uh, rest area, that truck stop. And then it goes through all of Orlando. And we're going to go on the other side. Luckily, the traffic's pretty, pretty slow this time of night. Get here 
hard time, but the one thing about Walmart, if you're late, uh, if you're late by an hour, you're not, you're getting rescheduled for a day or two later. You're just sitting here and hanging out. But hey, if you're early by an hour and a half, oof, you better wait till an hour. So bottom line is you gotta be within the hour, but if the broker tells you five o'clock and then it's six o'clock because they want you to make sure you're here early, just give me the right time. I'm a big boy. I can, I can handle myself and get there when it needs to be here. <laughs> Anyways, awesome comment. Thanks for that info. And leave stuff like that and uh, I'll put it on the channel more. Because uh, I don't see all the comments, but if you go into, it's called YouTube Studio. You have just regular YouTube and then like creators have what's called YouTube Studio. And so it doesn't show me every comment. Sorry, you're getting some wind through here. Um, 75 degrees right here. Uh, you don't get every comment, but it gives you like the highlighted ones. So. Or not to highlight it, but I guess I don't know how it decides which comments to let you read, but whatever. I try to go through as many as I can if they're very useful and inform informative. Uh, I'll probably, so I'll probably put them on my channel more, so thank you. Let's wait another eight minutes. Okay, Prime's going by us. There's one more creeping up behind, so he's got a loud motor on that 680. I'm going to fall in line from here, and I should be good with the uh, five o'clock, so. Here we go. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're working like a charm because it is 4.59, so we should be there at 5 o'clock once we pull up to the stop sign. Yeah, the guy kind of came out. All these cars have been showing up, people showing up to work. And uh, he came out and checked my paperwork, and now he's going to check my seal. Saves the guy inside some time. And hey, just a little half an hour mishap, but don't worry. That's the broker's fault, not Walmart's. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Last time they told me, like, pick a door between whatever and whatever, and then the guy's like, just get a door in 44 or something. Like, All right. Yeah, from 48 to. Yeah, um, 48, 59. Okay, 4859. 48, yeah, yeah, they gave you a weird one last time. He's like, if you can't find one, just go there. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good morning, Walmart. It's 48 to 59. Let's find a good one. Let's find a winner. It's one of those slide your tandems and unhook your trailer. What in the heck happened to this aluminum truck? Well, all right, let's go. We are in Florida and it is actually a little bit warm. So we're gonna go ahead and kick on that AC with the green APU. Oh man, let's get a little bit shut eye. And she is on. And even without the upgrade, which Eric from green APU is sending to me, I still think mine's pretty dang quiet. So I can't imagine it being 30% quieter. It's gonna be awesome. All right, a little bit more, should I? Had a lot of chatter on the CB just now. Two guys were uh, talking about how there's no doors open. But um, Green APU kept me cold for about 45 minutes. That was a quick unload. Six o'clock, it's not even my appointment time. It, just, it is my appointment time and we're already done. Not gonna complain, we're, we're unloaded, let's go. time winter haven that was uh i guess all you can ask for because it said five o'clock appointment then we ended up being i'm on it by six o'clock because we got there right at five o'clock even though our appointment was for six whatever lights on let's go uh probably back to the pilot over here just reset our clock and look for a load uh today heading back home or wherever the wind takes us Rise and shine, sunshine. Green APU, thanks for keeping me cool. Cause I don't know what the temperature is right now out here, but it's warm. You can feel it resonating to the sleeper. But we got some more good sleep. Our clock is reset. Let's go uh, pick up another load. The truck says 85 degrees, but the phone says 79 degrees. So still about 80 degrees. A little bit of humidity, of course. We're in Florida. The Highway four is right here. Uh, luckily, we did have to re re uh, reset our clock because traffic in the morning is even worse 
It's still probably going to be a little bit bad right now, but uh, early morning, it would have been even worse. So. Okay, let's keep turning burn. We got about, what? Yep, yeah, about a half mile over there. Getting on Orlando East. Highway 4. Oh, goodness. And all of you who live in Florida or have driven through Florida might know about this. So, right off the bat. <laughs> I spoke too soon about the later in the afternoon traffic. Oh, yeah. It's here all the time. I don't know if this is just traffic from Tampa Bay getting over to Orlando or getting over to the eastern side of the state. Man, we can't let everybody in. <laughs> For what it is, but somebody's mad about the uh, people letting people in. <laughs> oh, jeez. Good old merging. Yeah, with the old Warner trailer, it's not a great merger, but I'm trying to stay behind them so I don't pass them. We got the Schneider trailer coming up, and then there we go. Finally getting in. Okay, next Mack truck behind me. We're in here. Okay, let's battle through Orlando. Get to Daytona. Good afternoon. Cruising pretty good now. To Orlando, we get on the other side of this, and we'll be pretty good. Come on, Nissan, what are we doing? There you go, there you go. You got some decent drivers, you got some bad drivers in Orlando. <laughs> There's where the uh, Orlando Magic play to the left, that big old Kia Center. Okay, let's keep going. Let's get to Daytona, get back up 95. Made it to Daytona Beach, and there is the Bucky's over there. Load picks up at 5 p.m., so we got a little bit of a time, but I was grateful to get this. I found it actually last night um, on Truck Smarter. Popped up and I used the app to book it because I do not have, uh, it's called Worldwide. There's a sub subsidiary, subsidiary of uh, Global Trans, or maybe the other way around, one of the two, but Global Trans had a real bad rap. <laughs> uh, they came out of, Air they're out of Arizona, and they kind of dropped that name a little bit because they did that, but there's some cows over there in the field. But anyways, um, a pretty decent to 600 bucks right back home to my house, which I'll take because this market right now is not uh, great for stuff coming out of Savannah. That might change a little bit with the port of Baltimore like that. I don't know if they're gonna, how long it's gonna take to clean that up or when ships start going out of there again, or if uh, they'll just move it to New Jersey. I don't know that all the ports up there, but and peace for all that situation because that's crazy. Got a lot of clean up, a lot of restructuring to do, and that's six lives that are still uh, unaccounted for. For a poor construction crew of all things that was just working that night, and uh, unfortunately, they, their fate was there. But I uh, pray for their families and their friends and everybody that's mourning that loss. Let's get up to uh, Jacksonville and get up to Savannah, get loaded, and uh, it doesn't drop till tomorrow later in the day. So I knew that the, the guy. Uh, emailed me said, hey, you're okay with those pickup and drop times? I'm like, yeah, man, I actually need the late pickup uh, and the late drop. I'm used to it. It's that same uh, buy low place over there, the uh, distribution place for my, like, for buy low or, or uh, food line, whatever it's called. So, cool, cool. Let's keep cruising. It's 80 degrees, it says on the truck, so it's probably a little bit cooler than that. I'm going to stop once, probably 305. There's a new Loves over there. Even though Loves, I don't know why they always make it so confined, but we'll see if their new, uh, brand new one that they built is any better, but not holding our breath. Let's check it out, though. We are following the, uh, Trooper. Trooper just en entered the, um, way station also. He's getting the green lights to the right, and so are we. <laughs> oh, man. Green light. The Trooper went, like, all the way around and turned around and going to lunch or something. Well, let's keep going. Let's get to Jacksonville. I'll get the motor pops. I got
ram right there. Oh my goodness, I love it. It's like the uh, little mule from Revenge of the Stone, if you know what I'm talking about that movie. I think I want to do that roll kind of roll bar with the circle lights on my red ram I have at the end of the lake. And uh, I didn't know if they were going to use it or not, but we've sent an invite out for Lone Star Texas Ranger. I'm actually wearing his shirt today to him and his family. Just to have, they had a trip that was going to take them to Charlotte and Atlanta. I said, hey, if you need somewhere to stay, our, our lake property is right between the two. And they said, maybe. So they ended up in the standards. So that's awesome. It's cool to, to see them uh, be able to use it because it, it's, it's a nice place. It's quiet and it's. Uh, has the water there. A lot better when it's warmer, but uh, I'm glad they could use it. But yeah, that's that red ram of mine sitting at that lake, so I watched a little bit of Shaman's video this morning, and I saw him filming the truck. I was like, man, I need to do that to my ram, so. Safe travels to the Lone Star and the family. Laura, it was great meeting you finally, and all the babies. Uh, it was fun hanging out with them for a little bit. Even though we were all over the place for the truck show, it was uh, definitely great to spend a little bit of time with them, so. You guys got home safe and prayers for uh, getting back into work like we are so all right but that ram made me think about mine oh yeah it's a pretty cool roll bar back there i like it there is that beautiful bridge and speaking of beautiful t-dubs just sent me uh, i don't know if it came in a p.o box or how it got to the house but uh i just watched one of her little videos real quick that she uh sent me and it's pretty cool uh Ralph, that's all I got out of it. I'll, I'll have to watch it later when I stop and edit it, but I'll add these clips in right here. But just from what I saw real quick, that's pretty cool, man. I appreciate it. And uh, yes, it is a slow market for everybody, but it'll come back eventually. It's up and down, but we gotta keep doing, we gotta keep doing it. Looks like you're doing a heck of a good thing. So here's T-Dubs with this cool little clip. We went to the PO box today and got a few little things. Um, I got a very sweet birthday card from Brian and Michelle and a Starbucks gift card. You guys kill me with this. It's so sweet. I don't ever, ever expect anything. Thank you so much. They sent me a birthday card. Thank you. And this is so funny. It's so cute. Then this is from Freddy Freddy. This is for Justin. And it says, let's go get 10 for love it love it and it's an awesome awesome flag heck yeah isn't that awesome thank you freddy freddy so ralph from hot rig apparel sent us this amazing little get up over here of all these t-shirts i'm gonna go through and show them to you in just a second but i just wanted to share this really cool letter he says i appreciate your videos videos ever since i parked my peak last january in 23 because of the slow market I've gone full time with Hot Brig Apparel, and with that, I've been watching you, da you daily for trucking industry updates, especially with the load boards. We are all having a rough time, but I have faith we'll be rocking soon enough. Good vibes only. Say hello to the kiddos; they're awesome. And he said, "Sorry if you got the wrong size." He did get XL, which um, I think will fit. I love this one right here. <laughs> I don't know why, but that one's so cool. And thank you so much, Hot Rig Apparel. We appreciate it so much. So when I just stopped and checked out those clips, um, let me know if, if Tank's doing the uh, walk by the Egyptian in the background. I don't know, but that's awesome. And thank you, Freddie Freddie. That's a heck of a flag, man. Um, and thank you all you guys for giving teed up Starbucks the gift cards. It really helps my pockets, if you know what I mean. Um, but I gotta get more info, info on those shirts, Ralph. I asked T-Dubs, I was like, well, I wanna rep his website or something to let him know those are some sweet shirts. Maybe you could make one of the W9, I don't know, be a cool little, little family, who knows. And I don't know if that's DTG, like direct to garment, or if that's uh, screen printing, but whatever you're doing, man, you're doing, you're killing it. I'm gonna refresh real quick, and I'll uh, come back with a clip. Hopefully, TMs will send me a little picture of your business card or something with a website, and I'll plug you. And any of you guys like those shirts, which are pretty dang awesome, go check them out. That's the dirty side, still gotta polish that. But the APU, you gotta polish the green APU also. Raining a little bit out here, humid but uh, not bad at all. So let's get in here, refresh a big old generator. And uh, thanks Lone Star for the awesome shirt today. The old Nova. Oh, heck yeah. All right, let's hit the bathroom. They do have a Subway and Chester's here, but I'm not hungry. A little jet liner going down. All right, let's get over to Savannah, pick up this load. Uh-oh. Yikes. Oh, 
those clouds are looking menacing, but it's still 78 degrees, not too bad. And we got it, it's hot-rig.com. So thank you so much, Ralph, for that. And uh, we'll see if we can do something with it, maybe get a shirt of our truck made. That'd be pretty dang cool. Uh, the W9 on there with the whips and the cross and all that cool stuff. Fat, uh, Faith Family Freight on top. All right, we got a hot shot coming in here. If you don't know what hot shot means, it's like a under 26,000 pounds. Dodge Ram like that one or Chevy or Ford, but Ram seems to be the, uh, the one that everyone wants because it does have the inline six motor, unlike those V8s that the Duramax and the Ford Power Stroke has that are a little bit harder to uh, work on and maintain. But yeah, here we go. So thanks a lot, Ralph. And let's get up to where we pick up. We're going to be about a half an hour early. Our last wave station before we're out of Florida. Pulled in again. <laughs> guy in front of us got no pull in, we got pull in. We're going about 40 over the things, but uh, that's a nice uh, Peterbilt pulling in reefer. Always to the right side, too. Who knows why? Maybe the kids that want to see the clean side of the truck, that's probably it. Definitely it. They want to see the clean side of the truck. Ooh, they got a lot of water down there.
her job and she was trying to, like, I, I, I don't know, I never met this lady in my life. She just came up to me and stopped me in my golf cart and was giving me this whole story and said, I know you guys have a lot of money. Like, I don't even know who you are. Like, how do you know who we are? But we have a heritage. We have, like, a group for our, our neighborhood. So maybe she would see this post here or there or something. Or maybe someone would draw. I don't know. Either way, she we had this thing. So this just goes back to people selling their houses. And they're selling their houses again. day. Because I knew those people had both lost their jobs and they were trying to like do this golf cart thing just to like make extra money. And like they were Uber driving, which is which is no no fault of their own. I don't, I don't mind that kind of stuff, but it just made me think about how uh, our economy is and how people are kind of some people have to do that. See you later, Florida. It's been beautiful, it's been awesome again. Uh, so that's just my, my two cents on that. Uh, grateful to have all the, the reserve equity and stuff in our house, and I love that house. And, in a perfect world, I would sell that house and take that money and build it with our dream barn dominium out there at the uh, lake and have a shop and get it in and build a house where the single wide is and all that kind of stuff. But um, I understand what T-Dubs wants because she's like, man, we got 3% of this house. We're paying 800 bucks a month. That's unheard of. Plus, it's, our, our school system is amazing out there. Like The stuff that they do for these kids is great. So I get all that. And it's never wise to get rid of an asset. Keep that house up. Give it to your kids. Uh, it says, I, I kind of get from the Bible what God says your mission in life is, is just to give, give your kids, give, give what you can to your kids, make their life better, for, give them a better start. And that's pretty much my main goal in life now is to keep YouTube going, keep trucking going as best as I can to make the revive the family and then have them be able to take over whatever they want to do and have their own life and, and provide for them and help them get houses, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's kind of my motivation in life is my kids and my wife, just them to have a uh, better start than I did and have a little bit easier. Not too easy because I don't want to be spoiled and lazy, but just uh, when I need that help, because when I bought my first house, I didn't have any help from my mom or my dad. I didn't have any help from my mom or dad really ever, except my dad definitely gave me a better life than my mom would have gave me growing up in high school. Hard worker, still is to this day, and I appreciate him for that all forever, but uh, if I was going to go to college, just me and I go and get a full ride scholarship, I would not, I would have to pay for myself. I didn't have that more if I, when I went and bought my first house, I didn't have anybody to help me with a $10,000, $20,000 down, down payment, I had to do it myself, I had to save up myself. So that's, I don't, I don't, I know a lot of people have it that way, but I want to try and give my kids just a little bit more of a head start because this world's hard enough. And uh, especially with the economy this way now, uh, I'm thinking with Tina, we were talking about all these little duplexes that are getting built, these little they're building up, not out. They're, they're right next to each other. I forget what they're called. Or like, like there's, I think they're called duplex. I don't know. Whatever they are, condo things. But they're like houses, but they're all touching each other. They're building those everywhere. So maybe we grab a couple of those ones if the price comes down drastically in the next year. Or at least get one of them and then have that as a rental property but somewhere for them to live. Because we'd love to have them living close to us, of course, in the future. And having property definitely makes that a little easier, right? <laughs> but that's it, so... All right, let's keep talking, jambling about real estate. That's a little tangent. Um, let's get back out here to Georgia, get this low, get back home. I don't deliver till late tomorrow. Might be able to clean the truck up and polish more to write. Um, cab over I'm looking at, he hasn't responded to uh, letting me come or trading on it. So I'll probably reach out again, like I said, today. See what he says, but it's kind of far. It's up towards Greensboro. Um, and the price is a little bit off, like I said, for what I want. I probably need like a good, almost 10 grand off of what he's asking make it feel right for me. It has the motor I want all that, but these cab owners, you can get a... Thank you all you guys that are posting them, Just Trucking Family. You guys are all posting all these cab owners all over the place. I really want just a 12.7 liter Series 60 cab over. If it had the Aerodyne on top, that's the golden child. The white one, of course, would be the perfect angel. But I can wrap it white. Um, whatever color it is, I can wrap it or paint it. Uh, wrapping is probably more kind of the easier route to do it, but... Anyways, that's what I'm looking for. 12.7 60 series, which is rare. I know it is. And um, a, a K100 Aerodyne. So it has to have, I really want those same kind of sleeper I have on a W900. Because that'd be so cool to have them sitting next to each other, kind of matching the ones that cap over, ones that W9. And those would be my trucks, you know? Those would be my my two babies that work, work for each other. But I really want to learn more about that 12.7 motor. I've done a little bit externally on it, but I really want to, when it goes, I want to rebuild one. I know the internals like I do this Cummins I have right here. I know everything about the inside of this motor I'm running right now because I've rebuilt two of them. But uh, Detroit, I want to know that one too. But I don't want to blow up, but I know inevitably something will go wrong and, and I would like to uh, have that in my hands in there to re 
replacing those liners, replacing those pistons, those bearings, and getting that thing all put back together. And what do we got going on here? We got a little, we got a police. Well, that's just a light flashing on a motor or something. But that's a policeman, so a good thing we got over. DPS. All right, enough, for, enough rambling, Justin. What do we got going on? Is he pulling anybody over? He's just doing paperwork. Oh, he's got some for him. Or she. That's a, I've seen that a couple times now that this police force of wherever we're at, Kingsland, the Kingsland, they just pull people over on their own. All right. So watch out. Don't ever speed through here. Coming out of Florida, going into the first 100 miles of Georgia, or like, really like 80 miles, don't speed. There's a lot of, a lot of presence around here. And not the good kind of presence. I think this is a state trooper because he has that bunch of antennas on the back of him or a sheriff or something. I don't know what it is. He's got a number on the back. That says, uh, yeah, GSP, Georgia State Patrol. Nice little Camaro with the 199 on top of it. Okay. He's just cruising in the right lane. That's a nice Peterbilt over there. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Orange frame working truck. We're gonna go around the old Camaro GSB. Keep cruising. It's a nice orange classic XL over there. Uh, this is kind of that roundabout crossover traffic overpass that they've been working on for a while. It's not a great, great thing. I thought that that uh, fuel station one time when I was leaving Savannah was gonna be a good place to park, but it was not. I picked up over here those tire cords for Michelin over to the right. But this time we're going uh, two stoplights, take a left on Clyde Alexander. Let's do it. There's that Mr. Fuel 364. Not bad, but zero parking there. Not much at all. And there's that Parker's. I've stopped there a couple times too. Probably refresh there after we get loaded. Uh, five o'clock appointment. We're going to be there about 15 minutes early. Let's pray there in good spirits. A little bit chillier up here. It says 77, but those windows down, it feels pretty cold. There is a bunch more of those chassis right there on the right. Containers for sale. Man. But I do wonder if we're going to get more uh, more traffic because of that, that bridge down there in Baltimore. I don't know. Left turn right here. I gotta come wide because I got a stop sign right there in the middle. And I got a lot of traffic coming at me. After these two cars, I can drop a gear and probably make it. Let's do it. Hit the gas, hit the fuel. There we go. AMX? Okay. Worked them a couple times. I've never seen one of their trucks like that. Decent carrier. I think they're out of Alabama. Yeah, Dothan, Alabama. Total Solutions, APC. Oh, I know where I'm going. I Well, I think. No, I don't think this is the road up. There's a Red Bull that kind of looks just like this. That's where they ship Red Bull out of. Uh, I don't think so, though. Something else. Something else. Oh, it's Dole. Okay. Dole Juices. It does, it does say Juices on the Raycon. So we're picking up Dole. wonder where it's coming from. Probably somewhere south. Is this truck's entrance? Da, 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 da. Looks like it. There's a stop sign. Doesn't say truck entrance anywhere. Just says packaged foods. Maybe it's not juice. Maybe it's packaged foods. Who knows? Either way, they're probably coming uh, from down south with all that yummy fruit down there. Got an old Werner truck. Werner trailer. I'm going to have to wait for him. There's no way we're both clearing each other. First, I got to find a gear. There you go. Find a gear. Just gonna walk up there and check in. Here we go. How are we doing? Good, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Heels off the door. Twenty-three. Back up. Open your door, and then come back here when the light goes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Door twenty-three. Let's get in there. Close. Open the door. Slide tandems, and uh, come back in here on the green light. Easy enough. Let's go. Looks like we might be lucky and be able to pull in between these containers and back straight into 23. Oh, yeah. Real lucky. Cool, cool. Got a couple of Cascadias. One newer, one older. Just waiting to get loaded. So we'll wait. Back her up, 
couple of trucks they must just be able to park here that uh run for what is it r rbw there's also another one over there that's pretty beat up but just like i was talking about earlier we're doing more of uh comments in the comment section check out this one on the left when we were at matt's um i was running pneumatic and a lot of people say were saying how do you run that without having like a wet kit or a blower um and it's because the place where we dumped it off at they had on-site blowers so anyways that's the comment right there that's what, that's what pto stands for um it's not paid time off like t-dub said <laughs> uh, those two guys are already out of here they're pretty quick loading so we should have a green light soon enough I didn't even see this when we came in here, but look what we have right here. Oh yeah, it's a sign. International day cab. Gotta slide our tandems. Go sign some paperwork. Got our paperwork, our seal, and our United Commercial Insurance pen writes gloriously. Looks like we're gonna have a gorgeous sunset. Those clouds are breaking up. It's like that gorgeous truck. Let's get back home, T-dubs and the babies. Get some home time again. That's what life's about, that's family. Okay, okay, I saw that across the way. I said, I gotta get that on film. Let's get back home. That is the most equipment I've ever seen out there on the yard. Lots of uh, mini excavators. Oh yeah. JCB equipment. Got it everywhere. Uh, okay, South Carolina, you're only about 10 miles away. Second best welcome back to South Carolina that I have seen. The first one being coming across the lake uh, from Georgia, up uh, towards Atlanta. Back in our home state, oh yeah, we don't really need fuel, but we're just gonna play it safe. Probably stop because I'm hungry anyways. Uh, get just topped off and close this video. And we have about three hours, actually three hours and 16 minutes as I look at the map, 316. Until we're back home and uh, get a full day tomorrow deliver a night tomorrow. Look forward to Friday after that. That last way station is closed. We were going to stop at exit uh, 5 at that pilot across from the QT. I just remembered how hard it is to get back out of there against all the traffic. So it's a little bit later now. The sun is almost gone. We're going to stop up here at 82. Same price for fuel. It's like 359 which is a little bit up. It's 3, what, 39? 336 when we left. So, yeah. Club Fairway Station is quiet. Hit this fuel and close out this video. Exit 82. This is exactly where we stopped the video yesterday, which is kind of crazy. Coming in hot. Slow it down. Serves the brakes. Come on. There you go. Drop a gear, serves the brakes. All right, because we're a little heavy, 40,000. And we don't have juice. We have uh, like fruit bowls, like peaches and stuff. All right, the Ford goes by. We're getting gear. Here we go. Just get a little bit of fuel sipping. 389 on the sign right there. We're getting it for three. What did I say? 350? 349? Oh yeah. I remember this from yesterday, but I like this place. It's a little easier uh, off and on. Don't have to fight traffic so much because that exit five is boozy. Okay. Let's close this video. Get home. What a beautiful sunset, but half these pumps are closed, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it out here. But on that note, I'll wait for one of these to open up, get a little bit of fuel, get on home. Thank you, Lone Star, for the threads today. Lone Star, Texas Ranger, check him out on YouTube. Great family man. Hope you had fun at Matt's. I know you got home safely. Um, yeah, God bless you. We'll get home. We'll load this thing up tomorrow. We'll see you on the next one.